This is the tower, a group of four platformer levels that were recently added as a part of update 2.2 to Geometry Dash. These levels are generally pretty easy for most players, with each of them only taking about a few minutes to complete. But recently, Geometry Dash speedrunners have brought these levels to their absolute limits, discovering some insane strategies and skips along the way. So today, I'm going to be telling you the story about one of these speedrunners who did a run so difficult that it was previously thought to be impossible. When the tower first released on December 19th, Zeknode was one of the first people to achieve a world record. They got a pretty good time of 7 minutes and 40 seconds, only one day after the release of the tower in update 2.2. And considering no skips had yet to be found, it was a pretty good record for the time. But even though this run was pretty fast, a lot of time was actually lost due to poor movement and execution. And it wasn't until a few days later where the player Tiger achieved a new world record of 7 minutes and 7 seconds, where the first run was achieved that didn't include any huge notable mistakes. Almost every level was executed extremely well, with them only losing about a second on each of these levels compared to the individual world records at the time. This sprung the idea in some players minds believing that a sub 7 minute run could theoretically be possible mainly because one of these levels had still yet to be perfected. The boss fight located in the fourth level named the Secret Hollow was the only section of the tower that included RNG, and with it also being the final level of the run, getting a world record mostly just came down to whether you were lucky or not during the boss fight. Many speedrunners lost potential world records due to this reason, and nearly every part of the boss fight included RNG, from the fireballs having a random delay delay between them, to even the boss slam attack which has a random chance to spawn. So even if you theoretically beat the first three levels in the tower with the fastest possible times, players were still not even sure if a sub 7 minute run would even be possible. So it was only natural that most runners would have given up on this goal, with even the world record holder at the time declaring that they would be quitting speedrunning altogether. That was until the first major skip was discovered. Up until now, no major skips have been included in any of these runs, mainly because most of these levels happen to be cycle locked, essentially meaning you had to wait for some sort of cutscene or moving block to appear before you could move on into the rest of the level. One of the only skips that were being used in full game runs was located in the first level of the tower, where instead of holding jump while waiting for the door to open at the end of the level, you would instead jump perfectly into the door so that you could get Get through nearly a whole second quicker than normal, and at first glance, it doesn't look like there are any more skips to be found in these levels, especially with Geomchash being an overall bug free game when it came to stuff like clipping through walls and other game breaking glitches. But even so, Geomchash speedrunners were determined to find every skip possible in the tower. The first theoretical skip, other than the one that I had just mentioned in the first level, was located near the beginning of the second level called the sewers. Up until until now, most speedrunners just use an optimized route on the yellow pad section if they wanted to get faster times, but other than that, no other skips were discovered in this level that would save any significant amounts of time, except there was still one skip that people theorized could maybe be possible if you did every jump perfectly. If you watch closely at the beginning of the level, it looks as if you were just a few milliseconds faster. Getting on top of this platform before it moved into the wall might have just been possible. But this was quickly debunked when players using a task to record the perfect theoretical run couldn't even perform the skip once. So sadly, the skip was put off onto the side labeled as impossible. But even without the use of these skips, on December 29th, the player Alex was still able to beat Tiger's world record. Wait, that's world record. This run had been heavily optimized, so players were still not sure if a sub 7 minute run would ever be completed. But luckily there were still a few more skips players had yet to try, which could finally make a sub 7 minute run possible. 
Level 3 of the tower was the next place where a new skip had been theorized to be possible that could save around 2 full seconds if performed in a full game run. The theorized skip was located near the end of the level, where normally for players to complete this section, they would first need to jump onto the first platform, walk across until they reached the next platform, which would then slowly move down, finally allowing the player to walk to the last moving platform, which would then allow you to complete complete this section of the level. At first, some players believed that by abusing the game's hitboxes, you could potentially jump on top of these spikes and skip the moving platform section entirely. But sadly, Robtop had planned for this, and placed invisible spikes ahead of time to prevent players from skipping this section of the level. Luckily though, there was another strategy for doing the skip, where some players believed that if you were to perfectly jump over this platform, turn around quickly, and finally perform three short jumps, you could potentially save 2 seconds from doing it the intended way, but most speedrunners believe the skip to also be impossible, as many players up until now had also tried doing the skip, but none had yet succeeded. That was until, seemingly out of nowhere, the player Jack, who had initially theorized the skip to be possible, decided to practice the skip for thousands of attempts, and achieved this attempt. Even though the skip had finally been proven to be possible, every jump during the skip required near frame perfect precision with almost no visual indicators on when to perform inputs, so players were unsure if a world record would ever be completed with the skip. But one player in particular decided to attempt the skip in a full game run. This player's name was Alex. Ever since Alex achieved the world record on the 29th of December, Alex had been planning possible ways of achieving a sub 7 minute run. So far, he had tried everything, from perfecting every level as much as possible, to just plain brute forcing the final level in the tower, hoping to get that 1 in a million luck required in the boss fight for a good run. But at this point in time, the world record for the final level in the tower was still only 3 minutes and 22 seconds. So even if Alex had world record pace on every single one of these levels, he would have just barely been able to get a run under 7 minutes long. But once the jack cycle was finally proven to be possible, Alex finally had the motivation he needed to grind for a new world record. And only 24 hours later, after achieving his previous world record, Alex achieved this run. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. That is perfect. That is actually perfect. When this run was completed, it was considered to be the perfect run. Insane RNG during the boss fight, and level times so fast, they were being placed in the top 3 fastest times. Players in the community were shocked at how quickly he managed to achieve this run, and of course, even I was shocked as well. Just 620 milliseconds off from the 7 minute barrier, but still, it was just quite not enough. Soon, over a week had passed since Alex achieved the world record, and no one had even achieved a time close to his personal best. Some records were beaten on the individual levels themselves, but for full game speedruns, it seemed like everything had stopped. But this all changed on January 6, 2024, when a new feature was added to Geomchash in version 2.201. This feature was Coyote Time. 
Essentially what Coyote Time did was give the player a short period of time where they can jump after falling off a platform. This is added to mainly make the game feel more fair to newer players when performing late or difficult jumps. And after this feature was added, most of the Geometry Ash community actually enjoyed this new feature since it made previously difficult timings a lot easier. But for the speedrun community, it had changed everything. For a while now, the impossible skip that was located in the second level of the tower has remained in players' thoughts. Since it was only impossible on 240 FPS by just a few frames, some players believed it could still be possible if a new strategy of some kind was found. And so, once Coyote Time was added to the game, the player Jack, out of curiosity, decided to attempt the skip one last time to see if it was now possible. And only a few hours after messing around on the level, Jack performed this attempt. No one could believe it, but the previously impossible skip had finally been proven to be possible, allowing nearly a full second to be saved from the previous world record. But this wasn't the only new discovery to be found after the update. So far, three skips have been discovered in the final level of the tower. The first being a small time save in the middle of the level, where you must perform various quick timings in order to save enough time to reach this platform before it moved. The second being a skip during the boss fight, where you're able to hit the boss one extra time by saving one of your shots for when the boss changes phases. And lastly, a skip that allowed you to reach the end of the level early, by walking across an invisible platform that spawns shortly after defeating the boss. These skips were all discovered shortly after the release of 2.2, so at this point it was common knowledge to most speedrunners. But there was one final skip that was discovered shortly after Alex's previous world record, known as the Pac-Man Cycle. Ever since the tower first released a Geometry Dash, most players use the route you're currently seeing on screen in order to pass this section of the level. But even though most players believed it to be the fastest route, a player by the name of Zephyr, who was widely known for making botted speedruns for the community, decided to try multiple other routes in this section to see if the theory still held true. And surprisingly enough, after hours of testing, he discovered a route that was a full second faster than previously, so adding all of these skips together, it was now possible to achieve a time under 7 minutes long. And shortly after the discovery of most of these skips, Alex started heavily grinding the tower, practicing hours every single day and streaming his progress. And then, suddenly on one of these live streams, something incredible happened. Oh my god, wait, wait. Wait, 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 wait. No, I don't think that's it. Wait, is that it? Are you kidding me, man? Dude. After hours and hours of practicing, he just couldn't reach the time. He lost a great deal of his motivation for speedrunning and was beginning to think all of this practice and effort had all gone to waste. As time went on, Tiger had returned to speedrunning and was now competing against Alex for the world record, eventually achieving a time of 7 minutes and 3 seconds. If Alex wanted to be the first to get a sub 7 minute run, he would have to get incredibly lucky and fast. And so, he persisted in his grind for the world record, and after over a month of grinding, over 24 hours worth of failed runs, the culmination of his efforts finally had paid off when Alex achieved this run. Alex had missed the jack cycle, but still he decided to keep going.
Wait. Oh my god! What? Actually, 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 Due to some really good RNG during the boss, he still managed to break the 7 minute barrier, with Tiger just behind him with a time of 7 minutes and 1 second. And of course, one day Alex's world record will be beaten, but for now it stays as one of the best runs to be ever achieved in the tower. So that's the end of this video. If you enjoyed, I would definitely appreciate it if you subscribed, as this video took me forever to make, but I had fun making it and honestly, that's all that matters. But anyways, I'll see you guys in the next one.